Thank you. Thank you so much. I hope you'll bear with me. I'm going through a, just a little bit of an identification crisis, you know, uh, because of my involvement with a certain show from the fall of 1999 until the spring of 2006. I became known as the acting president of the United States. And uh, when the series ended in 06, uh, I became known as the former acting president of the United States, and it's still kind of hard to shake. In fact, just the other day, I was flying from Los Angeles to San Francisco, and as I boarded the plane, I was greeted by a fellow passenger with, good morning, Mr. President, Air Force One in the shop. <laughs> All during the flight, there was a couple in front of me arguing about who they thought I was, and finally, the young lady, uh, in no uncertain terms, in a very husky whisper, told her companion, no, 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 he is not Emilio Estevez's brother. He is Charlie Sheen's son. <laughs> we landed in San Francisco, and as I was walking to the bag baggage area, two little girls around 10 years old came running up to me, all excited, and one of them said, oh, sir, you're our favorite person in the whole wide world. Please, 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 could we have your autograph? Of course, I said, and I signed for both of them. And as they walked away, I overheard one say, I can't make out his handwriting. Who did you say he was? It's not easy being Sheen. <laughs> I want to call your attention to uh, a rather extraordinary occurrence that happened just last week and made the, the headlines of the Los Angeles Times. I'm sure some of you have seen it. If not, I'll give you the information. It's uh, big time in our purpose in drug court. I don't know if you can read this, but uh, I'll just read you the, the, the gist of it. Orange County and Santa Clara counties are suing painkillers, accusing them of a campaign of destruction, unquote. Two California counties sued five of the world's largest narcotics manufacturers on Wednesday, accusing the companies of causing the nation's prescription drug epidemic by waging, quote, a campaign of deception aimed at boosting sales of potent painkillers such as OxyContin. Officials from Orange County, we are in Orange County. Congratulations, yay, Orange County and Santa Clara counties. They both have been hit hard by overdose deaths, emergency room visits, and escalating medical costs associated with prescription narcotics. And the, the suit contends the drug makers violated California's laws against false advertising, unfair business practices, and creating a public nuisance, I'll say. In sweeping language reminiscent of the legal attack against the tobacco industry, the lawsuit alleges that the drug companies have reaped blockbuster profits by manipulating doctors into believing the benefits of narcotic painkillers outweigh the risk, despite a wealth of scientific evidence to the contrary. The effort opened the floodgates for such drugs, and the result has been catastrophic, catastrophic the lawsuit contends. So this was from, uh, and it goes on and on, and there's an inside story where you get all the details. Please go to uh, latimes.com, and the uh, reporters are Scott uh, uh, Glover and Lisa Girion, I believe it is. Um, they might even be here. They, they would be uh, 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 able to... Uh, to help you in your uh, finding out more about this lawsuit. But, you know, even if this uh, effort leads to the smallest of success, I believe it will have a major effect on the entire country and bringing these irresponsible marketing practices of, that the pharmaceutical companies and narcotics manufacturers have been using for decades under the protection of the FDA. So there you have that. Mm. Yeah. Uh, thanks to my hero, Earl Hightower, I'm here again. I think you heard Mr. Hightower speak earlier. Uh, whenever he calls, I respond. Earl Hightower has had a profound effect on my life, my family's life, and our future, and we're deeply, deeply grateful. We adore this man, and we can never really uh, tell him how, how much we appreciate what he has done uh, for so long for our family, and I adore him personally. And when he calls, I answer, otherwise, uh, Terrible things happened to me. <laughs> he calls again. <laughs> At any rate, I'm, it's deeply gratifying to once again address such an inspiring, committed, and heroic gathering of drug court professionals. And in so doing, I'm reminded that each time someone stands up for an ideal or acts to improve the lot of others or strikes out against injustice, they send forth a tiny ripple of hope 
and crossing each other from a million different centers of energy and daring, those ripples build a current which can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and injustice. Those words were spoken at the University of Cape Town, South Africa at the height of apartheid, 1966, by then Senator Robert Francis Kennedy. They are inscribed on his memorial at Arlington National Cemetery as well, and they have been a powerful source of inspiration for my generation ever since. You know, the, wor the more the world changes, the more it remains the same, I believe, because the most important needs of every human being on Earth are not only food, clothing, and shelter, but equally the need for justice, healing, and compassion. Without the latter, the, forward, the former are useless. It is the gross inequality of food, clothing, and shelter that divides us, of course, but it is the absolute necessity for, nece for, for justice, healing, and compassion that unites us. Now, all things being equal, I do not believe that any one of us can ever really learn a fundamental truth from anyone else that we don't already know instinctively. But the challenge lies in accepting the responsibility for that knowingness. So whether we choose to acknowledge it or not, we are all responsible for each other and the world, which is exactly the way it is because consciously or unconsciously, we have made it so. And while none of us made any of the rules that govern the universe, we do make all the rules that govern our own hearts and minds. And we are all beneficiaries of those countless souls who've come through here over the centuries from every nation on earth and who, and who assure us by their lives that the world is still a wonderful and safe place despite our fear. And we're not asked to do great things. We're asked to do all things with greater care. Now, such a concept is rare in a culture of, 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 of so uh, uh, many compromised values and, and so much cynicism, a culture that all too often knows the price of everything and the value of nothing. And yet, there remains a very real and mysterious yearning deep within each and every human heart that compels us to reach outside of ourselves and serve others for our own fulfillment. And each and every one of you have responded to that mysterious yearning which has led you to serve in drug court. But your service is far more than what you do for a living. It is what you do to stay alive. And now, now, by necessity, drug court can be very demanding and costly at times. If this were not true, we'd be left to question its value. But this above all, drug court teaches all its participants that the only things we can ever truly possess are those things which we cherish and give away with love, including our precious time and talent. And in the end, we are made worthy of the long-promised blessings reserved for those who do justice and show mercy. And we can help lift up people everywhere to that place where the heart is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, where words come out from the depths of truth and tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection, where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sands of dead habit, where the mind is led forward by thee into ever-widening thought and action into that heaven of freedom, dear Father. Let us all awake. Thank you very much.